see all of you here. Uh, there, there are some people who are still outside. Please, if you can join us in so that we can begin. Uh, my name is Kevin Lerito and I'm one of the pastors here at Mavuno Church and I'm glad uh, to be hosting you today uh, to welcome you to this historic event. Uh, why is it historic? It's because uh, sitting here today, uh, there is someone who is going to become the first ever governor of Nairobi. So that's why this is a historic event and uh, we have the privilege uh, to get to know all those who are aspiring for that position and even for us to get to know uh, what vision they have for this county of Nairobi. Uh, don't you want to know uh, what they have for you, what they have in store for you? Uh, so this is a great uh, day for us. So I hope you're excited as I am and you're ready with your questions. Are you ready with your questions? Uh, and speaking of questions, you know, uh, uh, a, few mi uh, a few minutes into the uh, debate, we are going to be giving you an opportunity to ask your questions. Uh, but because of time, we'll ask you to keep it very brief. Uh, so have very specific questions that you can ask uh, the aspirants who are here. I also need to mention that there are some slips of paper that have been placed on your seat. Uh, please just fill them in, uh, uh, give us some comments about this event, and then at the end of this event, there will be some beans at the back uh, of the dome where you can drop them in. Are we ready to begin? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just uh, invite our moderators for today. And the first one, he's a father to three lovely daughters and his husband to one wife. That's very important to know. And he's one of the executive pastor here at the Mavuno family of churches. He trained in management at the United States International University. And his passions extend from being a highly skilled pianist to cooking. He loves cooking. He's a teacher, he's a creative, and he's passionate about young people, and specifically our next generation. He's also passionate about seeing the cities of Africa transformed, beginning with this city of Nairobi. Who else better to moderate this debate but than our pastor Kiama Mugambi? And the second person, she's a pastor at the Nairobi Chapel. And uh, before becoming a pastor, she had a business in uh, multi-level marketing. She has also served as a lab technician in a cancer lab in South Africa. She has studied botany and theology. Just look at your neighbor and see whether they know what I've talked about. She has a passion for our city, specifically at the world level. She is very concerned about where you and I live. She is also passionate about leadership development and she comes from a family of high achievers who are making a difference in their spheres of influence. She has studied in the Af uh, Africa International University where she did her masters in biblical studies and currently she is pursuing her doctoral studies. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Reverend, soon to be Dr. Jacqueline Othoro. Welcome, welcome, how are you doing? Anyone uh, here at Mavuno for the very first time, we'd just love to welcome you. Just raise up your hands and allow us to just welcome you. We won't ask you to stand or anything. Let's just celebrate these ones who are coming to visit. We love our city and we want to talk about our city. We want to celebrate uh, our city today. And before we begin, can we invite the senior pastor of this church, Pastor Murady, to come and open for us with a word of prayer. Some love for the good pastor. We want to pray and I uh, just want to, uh, first of all, offer a very warm uh, welcome to every single one of you and especially our guests who have been longing for this time and we can't wait to hear your vision for our great city. Let's pray together. Uh, Father, we want to thank you so much for the privilege of being alive in these amazing times. Uh, where as citizens, we can come and debate and reason and hear and uh, participate in this privilege that our ancestors, our forefathers fought and gave their lives for. Lord, we are, we are recipients of this gift uh, that others shed their blood for, that we could be sitting in a place like this to be able to participate in the governance of our city and of our nation. And so right now we thank you for that privilege and we pray that we will not take it lightly. As our guests come and as they share wisdom, as they share their vision, give us discernment, allow us to ask the right questions. We pray that Lord, uh, for every one of us, it, this would be an enriching time and that you would help us to play our part in making this an amazing city for all of us to live. We thank you and we bless you for we ask this in your name. And all God's people say it. Amen. 
But let me ask uh, this question to all of us. How many of you are natives of Nairobi City? You are native means that you were born and bred at Pumwani, Nairobi Hospital, Aga Khan, in this city, maybe in your mother's back room. How many of you are native to Nairobi? That's quite a number. And how many of you have adopted this city as your own? <laughs> it's an equal number. How many of you today can say that you love the city of Nairobi? Good, then you're all at the right place. Because Nairobi is a complex city. It wears many hats. It's both a province, it's a county, it's the city. It's the hub of this nation. It's the political and the economic capital of this uh, country. And someone once said somewhere that if Nairobi sneezes, the country gets a cold. That's how important this city is. It's a vibrant city. It's a beautiful place to live. I think it has been nominated as the most beautiful and comfortable climate of any capital city around the world. We have an amazing city that we live in, that we call home. But we all know that Nairobi is not always the best of places to live. We know that crime is rampant. We know that unemployment is high. Uh, the traffic. Yeah. What do we say about the traffic in Nairobi? And unfortunately, the Nairobi that we knew in the 60s and 70s and part of the 80s is not the same Nairobi that we know today. Nairobians themselves have become very arrogant, very cold, very hard, very uncaring people. Is that who we really are? Is it time for us to change? But today, we want to hear from those who are coming to talk to us. Why on earth do you want to leave the city? That's what we want to know. Why have you chosen to put yourselves in a place where you will take on all the challenges of this city. And we want to know what you can do and tell us that will give us a glimmer of hope that we're not done with Nairobi yet. And so we welcome you, those who will be speaking to us, those that you have come with, and everyone in this tent, to an evening of interaction for the job interview of the CEO of the city of Nairobi. So this is, this is who we have here today. We have uh, uh, Dr. Evans Kidero here with us. Some love for Dr. Evans Kidero. Some love for Mr. Philip Kisia. Some love for Mr. Eric Mukua. And guess what? Mr. Joffrey Kobia is here with us. And we are eagerly anticipating Mr. Njim Nambaru. And also invited, and uh, we, we trust that he may, he may be on his way here, is Mr. Wait for me to say it. Wait, wait for me to say it, Mr. Ferdinand Waititu. And so here's what we're going to do. This is a celebration. We're going to be celebrating the, our leaders and we want to hear their heart for this city. And we're going to start with Mr. Kidero. They're going to come up one after the other. Uh, this is not a debate like any other debate that you have seen. We're going to be celebrating the city and celebrating leadership in the city. We're not going to be fighting over here. We're going to be celebrating our city and the leaders of this city. So first up is Mr. Kidero. Allow me to tell you a little bit about him. He served as the Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director of Mumia's Sugar Company. He has over 24 years experience. I'm going to invite you to just, just sit a little bit in front here. Karibu Nawatu. We're going to be, someone over here is going to be giving him a job, so it's good for him to sit near us, isn't it? He has over 24 years experience in manufacturing and media sectors, having served uh, several senior management uh, positions, and he also to become managing director of what is called GSK or Smith... Smith okay. What do you say that? <laughs> Glaxo. Pastor Kiyama, are you a natural born Nairobian? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Glaxo yes. Smith Klein. There we go. You know, I went to a primary school. You, we already go to <laughs> a group of schools. Okay. Here we go. Nation newspapers. He serves at the, uh, as the director of Minier Sugar Company Limited. 
Uh, maybe what we can do is start. Uh, do you have a microphone right next to you? Very good. Just, just, just say something into it. Uh, so that we. Uh, thank you, Kiyama. Thank you, Jacqueline. Oh, very good. At least we can hear you. Maybe we can start uh, uh, by asking you a question. I'm very curious about, and, and I'd like to hear, uh, Dr. Kidero. What's the hardest thing you've done in your life, and uh, how did it make you who you are today? I'm going to sit here right next there, to you. <laughs> there, are, there are a number of hard things I've done. The hardest thing I've done in my life was to leave nation to go to Mumia Sugar Company. Wow, why is that difficult? Come from selling information to selling uh, sugar. Because having, because having lived in uh, the city, having lived uh, not just the city in Nairobi, but major international cities in the world, uh -huh. having to go to sharks, having to go to sharks, <laughs> to deal with farmers and cane cutters. <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, it wasn't uh, easy. I'm going to run a company that had uh, consistently made losses. Okay. But um, well, I, thought I, <laughs> I thought I saw an opportunity to make a difference and I took it and I did. Oh, that's good. Huh? How, how has that made you who you are today? Uh, it's made me considerate. Uh -huh. it's, made, it's made me see uh, life probably a lot more clearly. Uh -huh. And... Uh, uh, it made me appreciate um, uh, probably the multinational life I lead, uh -huh. and it made me appreciate the Kenyan economy more, uh -huh. and the rural economy more, and it made me look at my a little bit differently. Okay. You know, I'm going to have to ask this question, Dr. Kidero. Did it make you any sweeter? <laughs> I had to of, ask. Of course, I mean, uh, you know, when, uh, when I left the pharmaceutical industry, yeah. uh, my friends made the joke that I was, I was being saved from peddling drugs to go and peddle news. And um, obviously, okay. li leaving nation is, I was uh, now leaving peddling half-truths and lies to be a sugar daddy. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a good one. Since, see, since, you used to, since you used to deal in drugs, in the best <laughs> sense of it, uh, well, with your background in pharmacy, and, and, uh, uh, and with all the resources that you had, uh, that, that you're going to be having as a, as, uh, at your disposal as a, a potential governor, what will you do within the first hundred days of your governorship that will make people remember that uh, a, pharmacy, a pharmacist has been... Uh, has been the leader of Nairobi. I think, I mean, by the time comes in your life and what you read in college really uh, doesn't matter because uh, education only teaches you how to, how to think and how to relate. Uh -huh. uh, but Nairobi as it is, and I think uh, Jacqueline did describe it, Nairobi is hard, Nairobi is uncaring, Nairobi is rough. Nairobi needs to be made soft. Uh -huh. It needs to be made a little bit more inviting. I like that. More That's a tweetable tweet. If you're on tweet, Nairobi needs to be made soft. Yes. Soft. <laughs> inviting. <laughs> um, uh, first thing, yeah. I think uh, the first 100 days I'll clean Nairobi. You clean it. Get garbage out of our streets. Yeah. Get garbage out of our estates. Yeah. And. Um, Get uh, the dirty water um, uh, out of uh, the, the drainages. Just make it a livable, a, a livable, a livable home because yeah. Nairobi is just dirty and filthy. It used to be a green city in the sun, but right now is um, um, under filth and garbage. So the first thing, whether me or anybody, yes. get garbage out of us. Just streets. get garbage out of this thing. Reverend Jackie, I think you have, you, you have a thought that you'd like to, a question you'd like to ask. Actually, what I want to find out is your heart in this matter. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want to hear what's deep inside that if really you were given every opportunity, you would do this. Kenya is a young country uh, in terms of uh, age, 50 years, but also in terms of population. The majority of this country are young people. Do you have a plan that will actively engage this demographic? Please state just one area where you think you will make the biggest difference for the young people in the city of Nairobi? The 70% of our population is below the age of 35. We have a million people coming into the job market every, every year. Yeah. The amount of jobs that we create is no more than 50 to 1,000 per year. So we have a job deficit of uh, 
a little bit um, under 1 million. And Nairobi is 60% of the gross domestic, um, the 60 percent of the gross domestic product. Yeah. Nairobi holds the dreams and the aspirations of Kenyans like he did for me when I was growing up. That's and true. what I like to do is to make Nairobi fulfill the dreams and aspirations. And Nairobi pretty much occupies the vantage point in terms of, uh, in, in terms of uh, being an economic hub, being a, com uh, a, a communication hub. And what I will do uh, in order to fulfill or uh, to fulfill the dreams and aspirations of the many young Kenyans yeah. is to work actively, participate actively yeah. in expanding our economy uh, ensure that the economy, because if you get Nairobi to work, if you get Nairobi to grow, the rest, country, the rest of the country works, is achievement of a double-digit economic growth that will create jobs that will ultimately fulfill the dreams and aspirations of the young people. So the one thing that you're going to do, you're going to deal with the economy and you're going to do, you're going to work on jobs. Absolutely. That, that's a critical Absolutely. thing. That's a critical thing. Yeah. Now, we're going to be hearing some more. But uh, we have someone else. We want yes, to invite yes. our next uh, panelist up here, and it's uh, Mr. Eric Mukua. If you would join me up on stage, somebody else give a round of applause. Now, uh, Mr. Mukua has something in common with your senior pastor. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? Oh. Well, <laughs> he went to Nairobi School. The Nairobi, the Nairobi School. School. I don't know why you say B. That's what they say. The Nairobi oh, school. Oh, he's just said it's the only school. <laughs> Is there anybody from Lenana here? Let's just start. Yeah, the yeah, there we go. <laughs> but there are other schools as well. Anyone from Sare? Ah, oh, no, just put your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he also went for his university at the Daystar University, where he had an MBA university. in strategic <laughs> management Woo! Uh, in the year 2008. And then he also has a degree from the University of Nairobi, where he graduated in 2006. Mr. Mukua has been a senior manager at the bank, a Kenya commercial bank. He's an accountant, but for me, what excites me, and I'd like to talk about it a bit later, you know, us pastors need holidays often. He's a hotelier with hotels in Nairobi, Mombasa, and Kisumu, beach, 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 beach. <laughs> but we can go and enjoy ourselves. And we want to ask you a couple of questions today. And the first thing I want to ask you is this. Nairobi is a vibrant and cosmopolitan city. Just about every tribe, every nation and nationality, every race is represented here in the city. They're working here or they're living here. Now, if you became the governor, let me just do what Pastor Kiyama did. <clears throat> let me just come and sit here. And just here. Good, eh? Yes. Just sit near Can me. Can I just have a conversation with me? Thank you. And just tell me. What would you appreciate most about the diversity of the people that live here in the city? And then how can you use that diversity to make the city the greatest city on earth? Uh, thank you, Jackie, and uh, uh, our viewers tonight. As you know, Nairobi is, just like one singer said here, yeah, Nairobi is, um, uh, we live here. It's our home. And uh, we love Nairobi. Nairobi houses about 42 count, I mean, uh, 47 counties. And then uh, it also houses over 210 nationalities globally. And this is like my colleague Evans uh, said, it's a city in the sun. And we need to live and say it's a city in the sun. Uh, Jackie, the question you asked on uh, the what I would appreciate uh, uh, as uh, the diversities in Nairobi, of course, uh, just to call the, the, the spade, not a big spoon, call the spade the spade. Nairobi is having the 47 uh, communities. And uh, the most challenging to any leader, right from the president, is how do you unify the Nairobians. And how do you put them together and uh, of course come to appreciate that uh, Eric Mukua, who comes from a minority 
uh, tribe is, is, is heading Nairobi as the CEO and the, and the shareholders who are my viewers here actually you are shareholders of Nairobi because uh, uh, being a governor you're, you're a CEO you're taking care of uh, the, the wealth in Nairobi and how do you proportionate it to the 47 counties who represent Nairobi I, I think that's the most uh, uh, challenging item that uh, any leader right from uh, the, the, the governor even the county rep, mm -hmm. even uh, because uh, mm -hmm. county rep, let's say in Kilelesho or Korogosho, mm -hmm. uh, all those communities are represented there. So that's a challenging idea. Right. Thank you. Now, just imagine that I um, am a Form 1 student right now. Five years after this evening, after the elections, I will be finishing Form 4 and possibly 18 years old and therefore voting for the first time. If you were to look back at the five years, what do you think you would have accomplished that would make me come and say, I'm 18 years old and I'm going to vote him in for a second term? What would you have done to this city to make such a difference? Nairobi has been in existence for many years. Of course, after independence, it's a jubilee, 50 years. Yeah. And uh, as all of us know, the economy of Kenya was uh, at the same level as Singapore and uh, Malaysia. But we are right now so behind. In fact, we can't even compare ourselves with these countries. What I would accomplish, uh, I'll actually term it in uh, two phases. There are those short-term uh, yeah. quick gains, yeah. and there are those long-term gains. That's management right there. Of course, uh, the, the, the short-term gains would be uh, light up Nairobi. Light it up. When you light up the city, you are removing elements to do with the insecurity, a, mm. great, a great percentage of it. Mm. And then, like my colleague said, because that's an item that is, uh, of course, shared across board, yeah. I will clean up Nairobi. Those are the short-term obligations. Like, if you ask me the question in the reverse, saying, what would I do? Uh, in a uh, hundred days, right. yeah. uh, I, would, I would light up Nairobi, clean up Nairobi, and of course, use the people who live within the communities, uh, let's say, Kama Kijiji, Kibira, Korokosho, Uruma. Mm. I will use the youth who are idling around there mm. to, make, to, make, to make sure that they do some work. Mm. They clean up their neighborhood. Or I use a contractor to, of course, uh, light up Nairobi, but the people working, fixing, are the youth. Because uh, then, when you're doing that, you're also empowering that particular community, and uh, you're yeah. empowering that local. Mm -hmm. I, have a question. I have a question for you that's connected with that. Eh? Uh, like you said, there, there, are, there are many youth yeah, and in, in the city of Nairobi, and like, uh, like has been said, they are increasing by the million every year. By the time you have finished your governorship, there will be five million of those people uh, um, in this country and a big proportion of them in, 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 uh, in this city. But here's the question that I want to ask you. Uh, how would you engage the youth, both those who have uh, a lot of education and those who have less uh, education? How, what are some of the different things that you, you would do? One of them you said is you'd, you'd use them to light up the city. What do you do with some of those people who are leaving high school, who are leaving college? Uh, how do you engage those? Uh, thank you, Kiyama. Uh, I'll, I'll answer that question in two phases. Yeah. Phase one, we realize uh, what you have said is uh, there are those youth who are educated. There are those youth who are unskilled. Yes. And all of them are youth. Yes. Now, part of my, uh, of course, my blueprint Yes. is that I will engage both of them. Yes. There is an element I keep sharing on media and everywhere on any engagement like this one. Yeah. Uh, I'll give an example so that you don't cut. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, in fact, I'm just about to cut you. But uh... the, the current <laughs> situation right now, uh, of course, uh, if you're looking at the current situation at the city hall, yeah. uh, a particular contractor is given a contract to do. Yeah. And then what does he do? 
he goes and engages the youth from a particular section like Vira or That's Roma. Right. Yeah. And the ones doing that contract, he yeah. is just supervising and yeah. then he gets all the cake. That's right. My take is this. Mm. We will have organized youth groups, yeah. organized women groups, and the graduates from our universities who That's are right. well trained yeah. will be the supervisors of the, those women groups, will be the supervisors of those youth groups, and then the work will be done with the same budget. We are not changing that parameter. But I'm not also saying uh, projects to do with uh, mega road projects or something. They are those. You're going to find. You're going to find all the the, the uh, available projects, large ones, small ones. Get people who are educated. Get people who are less skilled and use them together. That's what I'm hearing you say. Yes. The only parameter that changes, I will remove certain contractors. Of yeah. course, uh, if uh, if uh, some contractors are here, it's not that they lose the job. It's it's we are changing <laughs> a parameter that that empowers the youth and yes. puts money, more money in their pocket. Okay. Because when you empower the youth, yeah. instead of a contractor paying them like 300, they're going to pay them 3,000. I'll give an example. Of giving Actually, a, I'm, you know, I'm going to ask you to just hold off because we have other people over here who have ideas that they'd like to share with. Can, can we listen to them also as well? Some love from Mr. Mr. Mokua here. here. Here's the thing. This gentleman was born uh, Mr. Philip Mwala, son of Mama Grace Aluda. That's why off of the net, by the way. And uh, he's known for his famous quote, Give me the city council of Nairobi to run if, uh, and if I don't change it in six months, I'll go home and never be in public life again. He's here in public life. He was the town clerk of the city council of Nairobi. He was uh, the MD at KICC. In fact, that's where we got to interact. Uh, you may not remember me, uh, but uh, the first Mavolo Church uh, actually started in KICC. And we had uh, uh, interesting conversations and interactions around that. So we meet again today. Uh, he's, uh, <laughs> he was uh, um, a managing co uh, director, managing consultant at Grand, Grand Regency Hotel. I was able to say that. Are you doing I good? said again, yeah. Grand Regency You're doing good. Hotel. And Grand Hotels Kenya Limited. Uh, would you put your hands together and welcome Mr. Philip of Kis Philip Kisia. Actually, just come and sit here where Reverend Jackie was sitting. Very good. We like to see that because, you know, after this race is over, we are all going to be living in this city again together. So it's good for us to greet one another. Mr. Kisi, how are you doing? Um, okay, thank you. And you? As you can see, I'm doing very well. Welcome to Mavuno Church. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Yeah, when we are together at KCC, we are uh, the Mavuno downtown community. But why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about where you went to school and how that uh, changed your life, and then I'll tell you where I went to school also. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> now, um, I was born and raised in Nairobi. Um, I went to nursery school at Aga Khan Nursery School. Hey! And then... Uh, and now... <laughs> Anyone ever went to Nasser School? I can't. Yeah. We went to Mrs. Bissouza's School. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. And then, of course, I went to Aga Khan Primary School. Hey, Aga Khan Primary School. But then. No, we can say that anyone Aga Khan Primary School. I went to Kongoni Primary School, just the Indian. <laughs> the uniform was uh, yeah. Yeah, different. But Aga Khan Primary School was a city council school. Um, and, of course, um, my mother then decided, because uh, after primary school, of course, <laughs> our father decided that uh, we'd be raised up by a single parent. And that's why I referred to myself mm -hmm. as Mtoto wa Mama Grace. Mm -hmm. So she decided that we shall go to the village. Mm. She decided that as a single parent, if she left us to grow in the city of Nairobi, mm. uh, probably we would not grow into the, the person that she ever wanted. Mm. So we taken to the village. I went to the village from one to from six, and then I went to Utali College. Mm. After that, I went to USIU. I did my undergraduate, mm. undergraduate degree in uh, international business, mm. and then I did my masters. I finished in the year 2000. Uh -huh. 
Of course, I started working for a hotel group uh, called Sarovo Hotels, mm -hmm. where I worked for 17 years, um, mm -hmm. rising to the position of um, group marketing and sales manager. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I had, had a short stint at the Grand Regency for about three months. The famous Grand Regency. Yes, the famous Grand Regency. <laughs> yeah. I was the uh, director of marketing and managing consultant of uh, Grand Hotels uh, Kenya Limited. Let, let me cut you short over there and ask, that whole package experience, how has it made you who you are? Well, you see, starting from a very, very humble beginning, mm -hmm. um, I never started as a managing director. I started at the bottom. Mm. It has taught me how to relate with other people. Yeah. I've met different people from different walks of life, yeah. both locally and internationally, and I've learned to appreciate that people are different, that every person was born differently, including yeah. your own sibling. Wow, that, that's, that's tweetable right there. Everyone was born different, including your own sibling. Here, here's the thing, you've met many people, you've just said uh, something about that. Let me give you a scenario uh, that, that happens to some of us, and I hope it never happens to you, but let's, let's just imagine, eh? it's a, a hypothetical thing. You had an unfortunate event, and uh, you ended up going to one of the hospitals in this city, uh, and you went outside to pick a phone call like most public figures do, and uh, while you went to pick the phone call, uh, you saw a familiar face that, and you aren't sure where you saw this person. Maybe it was at campaign, maybe it was at Mavuno Church over here uh, or somewhere. And you spoke and found out that this person is getting checked in hospital because the day before they were, they were carjacked and then they got uh, a concussion. But his friend was less fortunate. Uh, she was raped and she's now in HDU. Now, obviously, as the governor, you know, it's not your fault. But you go home at night and this thing is bothering you. What is most bothersome about that scenario? I think as somebody who has been kajat, it's a very traumatic uh, experience. Mm. It's, I mean, it's a horrible experience that you can ever find yourself in. Yeah. I spent several hours with kajakers and eventually I found myself in a coffee plantation. Oh dear. So it's not an experience that I want anybody to ever go through. Yeah. If I ever found um, a person in that uh, situation, and you're the, the, the first thing is to empathize. Yeah. Put yourself where that person is. Try and feel that person. Yeah. And because when we were coming here, we were asked yeah. to come and speak to you from uh, our hearts. That's right. And allow me to quote um, uh, the great son of Africa, Nelson Mandela, who said, when you speak to people, in the language they know, mm. it goes into their heads. Yeah. But when you speak to them in their language, it gets into their hearts. Mm. So today I'll make an attempt, and I've done that before, to speak in your language so that it gets into your hearts. Mm. That is about Nairobi. And, and, <laughs> and there, 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 are two, there are two very important things that you brought about when you started the, deb the debate or discussion. You said it's about people. If you look at my motto, it's about putting people first. You talked, up, you talked about passion. So if, if, you, if you ever have to do this job as a governor of the county of Nairobi, you need something beyond managerial skills, which we all have. You must be passionate about the job that you want to do. So, 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 as, so you're, as you're empathizing with this person outside the hospital, yeah. Um, well, the, yeah. of course, the other thing that um, um, I'll immediately do is to engage the family. Yeah. So that um, the, as a first step, of course, medical attention will be the first thing that I'll suggest That's that right. the, the, the person be given. Yeah. But the second thing is the, 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 the after, the, the process that this yeah. particular person has got to. And I'll suggest that they be taken through counseling. Yeah. And I'll make a follow-up to make sure that I engage this particular family yeah. because then that becomes a living example that something can happen to you in life, yeah. but you can come out of it and become even a better person. And as a governor, what you're telling me is that as a governor, you empathize with that person as a, as a, as a human being, as an individual who's gone through something that you have gone through. Absolutely. Would that be a mark of your leadership? That has been my mark of leadership. And that's why I'm talking about putting people first. Anything you do as somebody who is exercising leadership, right. you put people first. Right. I don't seek to be a leader because yeah. I don't believe in the big L syndrome. Yeah. I believe in exercising leadership. 
I believe that all of us, given an opportunity, can lead. And therefore, there's nothing like a leader, but we as human beings can exercise leadership given an opportunity. Fantastic. Before, Reverend Jackie. Yes, before um, I ask you the last question, I'd like to ask this question to our audience. How many of you here today don't have a job? Could you please stand up where you are? If you don't mind. Wow. Okay, now I want to ask you, Mr. Kisia, what are you going to tell these people standing? about their prospects for getting a job in this city if you were to be governor? First of all, I must... Uh, Address them directly. Yes. Yeah, talk, yeah, talk I, to them. <laughs> I must thank God that Mavuno almost 99.9% uh, are .9 employed. So let's praise God for that. <laughs> well, Mavuno loves to occupy. And, but uh, for but the, that having been said, that's uh, not uh, representative uh, of the city of my but, but that having been said, there are three things that I immediately do if given an opportunity to lead the county of Nairobi. Number one is to review the uh, tax regime uh, under the county mm -hmm. so that we give tax waivers to those people who intend to start small businesses. Number two, and I've said it again and again, I will give, I'll give the youth, the ones my very good friend Dr. Evans or the Ambo Kidero has said, I'll give the youth, I'll create a fund for the youth, I'll create a fund for women, I will create a fund where the youth will be allocated 200 million shillings as a grant. They will be able to access this money and develop their own businesses. The third thing that I will do is to ensure that there is security. Because when you deal with the issue of security, then people are able to move freely, people are able to do businesses freely, and that has a spiral effect on the economy. The last thing that I will do in the interim is to allow people in the informal trade to conduct businesses without harassment, allocating them areas where they can do business. Okay. But in long term, when I was at the council, I was able to get the cabinet to approve uh, development of markets through PPP. And therefore, immediately I take over, I will invite private sector people, both locally and internationally, to build 22 markets to accommodate all this youth we have and the people in the informal trade. Great, that's that's good to hear. That's that's fairly comprehensive. So, so for all of you who are you satisfied? Those people who yes. stood over there, are they satisfied? Well, they'll 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 answer that next week. Well, I'm, I'm I'm actually excited to invite the next person because that's it fits right. into that demographic. And that's please right. put your hands together and welcome with me on stage, Mr. Jeffrey Kobia. And I'll tell you why I'm excited about this particular candidate. Very good. This young man's like my baby brother. <laughs> you know how old he is? Hey. 25 years old. So, so some of the candidates here, uh, please forgive me, uh, gentlemen. I'm looking at them three in particular. Uh, are, are old enough to be his father. <laughs> but he has taken the bull by the horns and he's decided that he's going to run for this race with the big guys. Uh, he has... up to this man. <laughs> <laughs> when I was 25, let me just say. <laughs> Don't give out all your secrets. Just keep some of them. Right? Okay, I'll keep them up. But now, one thing about Jeffrey that we need to know is he's a well-accomplished young man. He has worked for GM, General, Mot um, General Electric, sorry, GE. But he's also been the main coordinator for Kenya's Vision 2030. He holds a Bachelor of Commerce degree from Strathmore University. So, Mr. Kobia, of all the aspirants, you are the youngest, and I'm sure everybody keeps reminding you of that fact. But let me ask you this question. Just because you're young, do you really get the young people of this city? And why should they vote for you just because you're young like them? Do you have something substantial that you can offer the young people of the city? That is different from these guys here. <laughs> Hi, uh, Culture Defining Church, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely okay. somebody who reads, eh? Okay, you got that right, you got that <laughs> No, I've been to Unshackled. <laughs> 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 
so I've been a Marvel Knight in a way, yeah? <laughs> Um, okay, now thank you very much <laughs> for inviting me, and I can tell you for, for a fact that the youth are going to buy into my story, and I'm going to tell you why now. Just give us one very clear point, one reason. Before I joined politics, I was working in an office, complaining about poor leadership, complaining about bad roads, unemployment, Generally, generally doing what every Nairobian does. <laughs> yes, generally. <laughs> Just complaining. Just whining about the whole deal. Yes, complaining, whining from the office. And then I asked myself, God, please send a leader to change Nairobi. God was not answering my prayer. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I'm going to take up the challenge, and I'm going to tell God, if you give me the nomination certificate, I will change Nairobi myself. And thank God, now I hold the NAC nomination certificate, and I'm going to change Nairobi. Okay, cool. uh, let, me, let me just say why the youth are going to change Nairobi with me. The first thing is, if you're not in politics, you don't know what happens. I can tell you as a new entrant, it's very challenging. One, all the leaders that have come before me have spoiled the environment. If you don't have money, no one is going to vote for you. In fact, small kids, some hey, kijana, let a person go to skize serazako. It is, I'm telling you, it's heartening. You feel very bad. So and what, what, what are about to do? To change that? What about to do? Instead of giving people money, I have gone to various places and I'm working with the youth telling them to form sustainable groups. I'm working with the women, telling them to form sustainable groups, because once I join the governorship of Nairobi and become the manager, I'm going to allocate funds to these groups and make sure that they have a living that is sustainable. And I've already started identifying the groups, and I'm going to change Nairobi. OK. Now, that's what you're thinking of doing now. Yes. Five years from today, you'll yes. be now the mature 30-year-old young man, and you're hanging out with your boys and having a conversation about the five wonderful years that you've had transforming this city. Yes. A phone call comes through and you step out and you leave your boys talking. What do you think they'll be saying about your leadership and what you've accomplished? Will they be saying this guy has spoiled the city or this guy has done amazing stuff? What do you think they'll be saying and in what particular area will you have made the most difference? Today I want to declare publicly that in 2022 I want to be president. When... All right, you got some fire in your belly, sir. <laughs> when I leave that room, the boys are going to be saying, this has been the leader we have been waiting for. Yeah. That just says it right there. Yeah. Hey. Okay, what one thing? I don't want to leave it at that. It's a nice, as you said, it's a tweet of a tweet. It's a tweet, yeah. Okay. But I want you to just <laughs> to come and tell us something concrete that you'd have done mm -hmm. that would people say that's the leader been waiting for. What one thing would you have done in this city to make that difference? I'm going to have created jobs for the youth. I'm talking about 100,000 jobs. Okay, they've asked the question, not me. How? Yes, yes, and I'm going to break it down. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, guys, let's, let's, let's give him a chance to say what he needs to say. How many minutes are you going to give me? Two minutes. Two minutes. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. I'll give you more rope, more microphone here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> two minutes, two minutes. Okay, okay. no problem. Tony Kazi. The first thing is to make sure we have self-employment. How are we going to achieve that? Is to make sure that these groups I'm talking about, they have the funding, the women have funding on the ground to do sustainable projects. That's number one. That is self-employment. And at the county level, I'm going to help give funding for the groups that want to register and organize themselves and keep the youth, the women, and the elderly engaged. That's number one. That's my source of employment that is going to be sustainable. Number two, my project, uh, my county is going to be having projects in the healthcare sector. I intend to engage the youth 
who are coming out of KMTC to do internships in my dispensary to get uh, knowledge about how to practice. I'm going to engage the youth service to help me construct the roads in my county. And I'm going to also engage the youth to help me manage the county through community policing. I'm going to also be engaging the women to make sure that I have funding allocated to them to help them do the projects that they have. We have projects, people are visionary, but no person gets the funding. Money is allocated, but it doesn't get to Mashinani. I've been there, I've spoken to people, they're very passionate about it, and given an opportunity, this can be done. It's only the right leadership that we need. All right. Okay, thank Good you. Good stuff, that's, that's 100 jobs right there. Finally, I think you've answered my question. That's the question I was going to ask you, and, uh, and you've answered it. Finally, we still have one more. We still have one more aspirant with us here. I, have these guys done a good job? Yeah. They've done a good job, okay. I think we can celebrate them. Go ahead, you can celebrate them. I am hoping though that the next time we do this, uh, we do this thing, we're gonna have a uh, um, more equitable representation here that is constitutional. Uh, uh, yeah, and all the you. sisters say can, can I just speak into that? <laughs> yes. Just give me a moment to stand on my soapbox. Wadada. Yes. Uh, what, what, what's please, happening? Please, mm. I can see some fine women who can think, who have got plans and ideas. What are you doing sitting on that side and not on this side? Amani. Ah, yeah, we have the good. challenge is out. Eh? The challenge is out. Running mate. Your, your, your running mate is here. Yeah. Wanjiko yeah. Wanjiko Mwangi. Why is Wanjiko Mwangi? Yeah, Wanjiko Mwangi. Yeah. Okay. This next gentleman, this next gentleman uh, is a, a businessman par excellence. Is that how they say? <laughs> you, you're getting better. I'm getting better. You are, really yes. Yeah. <laughs> Owner at, uh, how do you say this? Dyer and Blair? Dan Blair. Investment Bank. Uh, studied at the University of Nairobi, uh, moved into the city many years ago and has held many uh, important positions in this city, uh, ha having been appointed uh, by the president in the, in the Nairobi City Council Interim Oversight Board, uh, has been executive chairman at the Nairobi Securities Exchange and a chairman at Africa Stock Exchanges Association. Would you put your hands together and welcome Mr. Jim Nabaru. Just come, ca come here and sit right next to me. Okay, like we said, we are going to do this thing completely differently. This is not adversarial. We want to hear their hearts for the city. Is that how is it going so far? Is it going well? Yeah. I think it's going very well. Miss Sambaro. It's good to have you with us today. Thank you for coming. I get it that you would like to... I, I thought this gentleman was taking a room. There's two. There are too many of those pranks at Kongoni Primary School. <laughs> and it didn't always end well for me. Thank you for coming today. We're glad that you, you're here with us. You want to serve this ready and are ready for work. But here's what I'm wondering. What is it that you like most about this city that made you stay here many, many years? What, what is it that you've loved about this city? And what you do, what you do to bring that thing even more when you become, uh, if you do become the governor? Um, thank you very much for the question. First of all, I want to apologize. My voice is not particularly good. Uh, I've been campaigning and I've been making a lot of speeches. And uh, since uh, I'm a new man in this game, I have not, uh, <laughs> I have not managed uh, to to find a way of talking without losing my voice. Oh dear, I'm so, I'm so let, sorry. Try capsules. Uh, but uh, let me say, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'll do that after I leave here. Uh, let me say this: there's something very special about this city. I love this city has made me what I am. I was born in the rural areas. I was born in a place in called Kangema, Moranga. And I never wore a pair of shoes until I went to Form 1. I came to Nairobi 
to go to form 5 at Strathmo College and after that yes, what was Strathmore and uh, after that I went to Nairobi University let me say this I my when I look at my background and myself at the moment I feel that I feel that this city has done great me it had done me great service yeah I lived in this city, I met my wife in this city, I brought her my... Oh, how many of us found our wives in this city? <laughs> <laughs> I brought her my, my children in, up in this city, and this city gave me a lot of opportunities to make a difference in my life, to come from where I came, from humble beginning, from poverty, to where I am. Not that that I'm wealthy or such, but the point is that, well, uh, but the point is, <laughs> I think Pastor Kiamo wealth is relative, eh? The point is that, this, yeah. this, this is the point he's trying to make here. This yeah. city gave me a great opportunity, yeah. and many opportunities, yeah. and it is this type of opportunities, that's right, I would like this city to give to every young person in this republic and this county. Well, that's, that's, that's good. Here's a situation that I want to give you uh, just, just to hear your heart of, of how, how, how this would be. Um, let's, I'm, I want to give it to you as a scenario. There's, there's a resident who lives in Tasia, up uh, near where I live. Uh, he's uh, middle to low income, living in middle to low income housing, uh, probably paying rent between 8 and 12K uh, like this. He has two children, uh, lives with his brother's niece like many people do in this city. Um, um, the eldest is three years, uh, uh, um, his eldest is three, three years, his niece is eight years, and the youngest is three months. Now, where they live, there is no water. Where they live, there is no water. So they find themselves having to fetch water. And they fetch water in those jerry cans, and then when they bring it in the house, they put it in the bucket. One day, the three-year-old, and this is very close to me because I have a two-year-old, the three-year-old trips and falls inside the bucket where there is water. With all those things, those tundos and things of water, it was bound to happen. And uh, had it not been for the house help, this would have been a completely different story. How would you reassure that woman? And as the governor, what is it about this, that situation that sort of gets you, that, that you know, enters into your mind and, and makes you want to do something? You know, I look at uh, some of these big houses which are being built, and I've been in some of them. But the saddest thing about it is that some of them do not get regular water. Yes. So when you talk about that lady yeah. who purchases water and put it in a bucket, I truly understand yeah. the difference. Yeah. When I was uh, when I left the university, I used to stay in Makandara, Ma Mandarak, no Makandara, Hamza Makandara. Yeah, Hamza. And we used to carry water, you know, from the room to go and shower in the, an open place. Yeah. So when you say that the water is not available, it really hurts me. The point is that this city was designed for about one million people. The water we are consuming here was designed for about one million people. Yes. The water works, the whole thing. But yeah. we have four million people. So the, what we have, we don't have enough water. Yeah. We don't have adequate water available. Yeah. And I think what I'm, you are saying is that the first thing is to address that issue. Yeah. To make sure that water is available to every household in this city. There's no way you can... I sort of connect with that. But there's a question. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Yeah, because water is life. Yeah. And I think it is very important that everyone has access to that water. Yeah. Therefore, the leaders of this city, the governor, must address the issue as a fundamental issue and the fundamental light for human beings who are living in this city. <laughs> well, since the crowd has asked. Now, here's the thing. You, you've asked that question. There's going to be a time for you to make a comment, and it's coming up just now. But, Reverend Jackie, you've got a question to ask, and then I'm going to come here, Mashinani. Okay. Because I want to hear a few. Let, let me make the comments. comment, uh, Mr. Mbaro. I love your poster, one of your posters, where you are standing there and you're rolling up your sleeves like you're ready to work. I tell it's you, a nice, it's a nice shot. Your team, they did a good job on that one. I, I like it personally. But let me ask you this question. A lot of the times we asked, we've asked everyone on this panel the same question. But everyone has committed from the level of uh, building and, and, and creating employment 
from the bottom going up. Now you say you came into the city uh, and uh, the city welcomed you and you made your wealth here in the city. My question is this, how would you then use your, 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 your group of people where you are actually uh, domiciled, the CEOs, the, the company owners, those who are all on the stock exchange, how would you utilize your authority at that level to create jobs for the young people? We've been hearing it from the lower side going up. Tell me what you're going to get the CEOs of the city to do to create jobs in this place. I think there are three ways of uh, creating more jobs here. Uh, one of them is to encourage the city to emerge as a very entrepreneurial city where everybody can feel that he or she can do business, can set, set up a business, and you want to look at the, all the bottlenecks which can prevent this city from emerging as an entrepreneurial city. You want this city to be almost like Hong Kong, where business is thriving every day. The second way is what you're saying, is that what are we going to do with the major corporations which are working here? The one thing we have been saying, and I've been talking about this way myself, is that is to t design Nairobi and push Nairobi to be Africa's business headquarters. In other words, we want Nairobi to emerge as Africa's business capital. In other words, any big corporation which is operating within the continent of Africa, you want it to encourage them to use Nairobi as a business headquarters. If they do that, they will definitely create jobs for a lot of these young people in this city. Thank you. Now, now the third point, mm -hmm. because I have three points, mm -hmm. the third one is to work to have a tripartite agreement between the corporations, the big corporations, the government, and the unemployed people, people who are coming into the market. So that we create a concept of a volunteerism. In other words, the corporations will employ people for a period of two years with very low salaries or no salaries at all. They will train them for a period of two years and they will acquire the experience, the knowledge and exposure. And after two years, if there are any openings in those corporations, then they will get the first priority to get the jobs. By the way, we would also do the same thing with the pol policing, with also in the government service. The point is that they will be given the first priority to get into formal and paid employment. But I think the important thing is that we want to give them the young people where they don't have. That is the experience, the exposure, and the network, which they don't have. But we can make a deal with the private sector so that the private sector, the corporation, provide the experience and the training mm -hmm. at a very nominal price. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Here, here's, here's the thing. We, we've had your heart for the city. We've had all your hearts for the city, the six hearts for the city. We have about maybe 700 hearts for the city over here. And here's, here's what I'd, I'd like us to do. I'd like us to hear a heart for the city. Now, because you're not aspiring, I'm going to give you one sentence, not one minute. But I want for these people, the governor of Nairobi is represented over here. But I want these people to hear our heart for the city. And this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to give us just a sentence each for us to be able to say something about the city of Nairobi, something that, that you love about the city of Nairobi, so that this gentleman can hear it. Is that right? So that this gentleman can do what? They can hear it, and then we want to hear their response to our heart for the city. Is that good? Okay, so now think about it right now. Think about it right now. Now, here's the other thing. Uh, you can also, uh, um, uh, you can tweet your, your thought, you can tweet your, uh, what you have in your mind and use the hashtag uh, hash Nairobi Yangu. You can use hashtag Nairobi Yangu and you can add to the handle at Mavuno Church ORG. Is that good? So if you don't get a chance to speak on the mic, then you can, uh, you can actually tweet it or text it. I don't have the number of head. But uh, I think if you can tweet it, most of the people who have phones over here, you can do the thing. Is that good? Are you ready with your sentence now? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm going to walk up to you, and I'm going to start this side and come, come, come down this side. So if you have a sentence, just raise up your hand. Try to catch my eye, and you can say it in one sentence out at the back there. Uh, Reverend Jackie, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. It's one sentence. 
Otherwise, that, that gentleman will switch the thing off. Diabolical public transport. Okay, I'll ask. Uh, are you gonna are you gonna have a couple of those, Pastor Kiana, or can we just go straight away? Let me pick another one. Diabolical okay. traffic, public transport. Coming here was an issue. Even the good aspirant, Mr. Mbalo, was on his way for a long time. Safety. Okay, now this one is from uh, an aspiring young man. Just, just, what's your name again? Doron. How old are you? Nine. Nine. He's nine and he's asking about safety. And uh, I feel that. You're going to go places, young man. You're going to go places. Uh, recreational spaces. Recreational spaces. When I grew up, there used to be parks. What parks are there? Let's let's have those comments. Let's, okay. let's have the, the uh, I, I, will, I will ask uh, Mr. Kisia to respond to recreational spaces, and then I'll ask uh, Mr. Kidero, Dr. Kidero, to respond to our transport system. And then the last one was safety, and I'll ask our young uh, Kobia, please, if you could respond to that one. Yeah, we'll just half a minute. Half a minute. We want to hear more hearts for Nairobi. Mr. Kisia, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, thank you. Now. Um, when the city was planned about 25 years ago, oh, um, it had features that included recreational spaces. But unfortunately, over the years, those spaces were grabbed. So if I'm given an opportunity uh, to be the first governor of the county of Nairobi, the first thing that I'll do is to get the laws uh, to do with the physical planning that are lying at the office of the uh, attorney general um, to back to city hall or back the county so that we can start implementing them. Those laws make it mandatory for uh, people who want to develop, uh, get into developments to set aside areas for recreational facilities. The other thing is, of course, we as a county still have, fortunately, a number of recreational facilities that are not properly being utilized. So the other thing that I'll do is to uh, spend some, some money renovating what we have, equipping these facilities so that we can optimally use um, what we have. Thank you, Mr. Kisi. I think we'll stop there. Mr. Kidera, Dr. Kidera. Oh, I, I think... Uh, as long since we had you talk. <laughs> <laughs> the diabolical public transport system <laughs> is probably an understatement. Nairobi has a little bit over 2,000 kilometers of roads. And uh, um, uh, just to probably compound it, it takes an average of um, 31 minutes to get parking space in Nairobi. Uh, if you are lucky. If you are lucky versus the world average of 17 minutes. And 70% of Nairobians are alone in their cars because our public transport system um, uh, does not work. Uh, I remember when we were young in, this, um, in, the, in, the, in the city and the public transport system work, Kenya Bus, where um, the city council was uh, um, a shareholder, a stakeholder, you actually walked to the bus stop two minutes before the bus arrived and you got there and the bus uh, got there. And there. So the bus had times back in the day. Bus had time and, and, they, uh, and they were, never, uh, they were n never late. So let me just take it two parts, in two parts. The state of our roads is deplorable due to non-investments and non-maintenance. Actually, having worked in a factory, I'm told that there's no African word for maintenance coming from Cape of Good Hope to Alexandria. We know the situation is bad. Yeah. I, I think what we need to do is review one is uh, one, one is establish a mass public transit system uh, uh -huh. using um, our current road networks obviously which would need to be expanded uh, uh, and uh, a light rail system you know we tried we've tried the Siokino uh, rail coming into town but when you get into the to Nairobi railway station one uh, is as diabolical <laughs> the, the railway station is just as diabolical as the transport system because then how do you get to how do you get to up the hill how do you get to Westland so we need to establish um, uh, a mass transit uh, busing system that takes 60 to 70 uh, uh, people. I know the issue is going to be that there's quite a lot of investment. What do we do then? But these are discussions we will have with the investors so that we have a gradual uh, movement from uh, uh, a gradual movement 
to replace the, the, the current uh, small sitters, not overnight, but uh, over time. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, but, but I was just, I was just going to add that uh, the, uh, apart from the Sekisi Okimao coming into Nairobi, uh, develop the stations along the way, Makabara, Makongeni, Kaloloni, yeah. okay. develop the thick uh, Nairobi railway line and develop the Nairobi Limuru, Limuru line okay. so that it's integrated in the rail system. Yeah, we want to hear a bit more of the heart of the city. So if we could hear, we could have uh, uh, Mr. Kobia so that we can... Well, I've got some people planning to give their one sentence comment here. Okay, can we go ahead? Yes, go ahead. Thank go ahead. you very much. Uh, for security, mine is just going to be faced in this sense. Not uh, particularly faced, but uh, within the Constitution, the responsibility about the police lies with the national government. So I'll make sure my senator and my members of parliament for Nairobi County will be able to uh, ask the Inspector General and push for the government to allocate more funds to have more police on the ground. The second thing I'd also do as a governor for the county is to make sure that I have street lighting to every corner of the city of Nairobi. The third thing that I will do as a governor is to ensure that we, as Nairobi as a city, we have CCTV installed to almost all corners of the city. Then the fourth and the final thing is to make sure that the youth are engaged because it's out of an employment that we get security issues. And the other thing is also to tell the people that do as such to be serious about how they do things because uh, you find that we have the Ascaris but they don't actually really search us the way you'd be searched maybe in Kigali or something. If they're not serious and we need to be serious about security. And probably what I can add is to make sure that I can pass a bylaw to require every business operating within the city to have at least an Ascari uh, given protection to the people within that city. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Where are you? Yeah. You're ready for me? Yes. Okay. I'm unemployed, not looking for employment. How can I earn from my passions work from my heart under your leadership with um, enabling structures from your end? Uh, that's, that's, a big, that's, that's a big question. I was looking more for more of a comment about the city of Nairobi. Uh, but that's a good question and uh, someone, someone probably should address that. Targeted interventions for slum areas. Targeted interventions for slum areas. I like to call them informal settlements. Uh, where was that? Uh, let's try a bit in front. I haven't done anything in front here. Uh, integrity and effectiveness in the city council. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In integrity and effectiveness in the city council. Let's take those three. Okay. Now, let me see. Uh, Mr. Moka, if you would uh, talk, talk about the targeted. That sounded very complicated. Targeted. Intervention in the informal settlements, and then uh, I will ask Mr. Jim Mbaru to deal. Goodness, has my mind gone blank? Pastor Kiana? Yeah. Yes, what were the questions again? Well, those, those slam areas, the, the first one was, was a question, it wasn't a comment. Yes, well, oh, yes. yes, a young lady who doesn't want a job, who yeah. is unemployed. Yeah. Uh, I think really, uh, her, how can her passion yeah. be turned into uh, fruitfulness? Is that correct yeah. in, a, in a nutshell? Yeah. Yes. And I'll ask uh, Mr. Jim Nambao to deal with that one. Yeah. Is that, is that <laughs> the two? Yes. I mean, it's, you're the only one left, so it's just gone to you. If you could answer those two questions. Well, the sleaze in the, you have you given the sleaze in the, in the, in the city council? Oh, yes. Okay. Let's wait on that one and we will hand that to someone. Okay. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me talk about the targeted intervention for the slum areas. Of course, uh, we should not be proud to say that we have uh, the Kibiras of, of Nairobi, where we are saying uh, we have the largest slum in, Nero I mean, uh, in, in Africa. I mean, that shouldn't, it should click our hearts that we need to do better. When I become the governor of Nairobi, because uh, I consider myself an expert, having, uh, having advised uh, uh, investors on uh, low-cost housing when I was uh, in the banking 
industry for 18 years. I think all of us know the, 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 the statistics in, in Kenya that uh, there is about 500,000 shortage of housing in this country each year. So, if you look at the, the slums of Nairobi, in every slum or next to a slum there is, there is, a, there is a Muthaiga, next to a slum there is a, a Karen, next to a slum there is, um, there is, uh, the, 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 there is a Kileleshwa and, and, and the likes. What I will do on this is that there is enough funding actually which can be done from the PPPs, the uh, private uh, public uh, partnership. Yeah. Of course, why am I saying that? I, 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 have, I have some insight on that there is a lot of money sitting idle within our banks. Or, uh, people who have a lot of money and it's just <laughs> seated there, we, we need to encourage them to, in, to, to, to invest in low-cost housing. For a return where uh, the, the county, of course, uh, gives them a return on, on, on their investment. Let me so, see if I get you right. Let, let me see if I get what you're saying. You're, you're saying that uh, you're going to look for people who have money and you're going to ask them to use that money uh, to solve the slum problem. What I said is exactly what you have said, That's but in another context. That's what I'm just in one sentence. Okay, let me, yeah. let me just explain because this is a very critical issue. In our in, in our in our in our in our city today, okay, that's 75 yeah. 75 percent of the the dwellers in this city live in the slums. In fact, if you go to Kibera, for instance, the the, the 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 remote area of Kibera is not even a housing unit. So, what the government uh, has been doing, of course, all of us know, is to engage and uh, rebuild a Kibera. Yeah. But, of course, I'm going to engage in rebuilding the Kibiras, rebuilding the Urumas, the, the rebuilding all the, un, I mean, uh, of, of course, the slums. Okay. In such a way that it will be practical, because there is adequate funding within the county. But yeah. the problem is, one of us has said, there is a lot of corruption. Okay. And, so and, and you see, that so fund so doesn't reach... That, that, that fund doesn't reach what so, it's intended for. So, sorry to cut you short. I, I, think, I think we get the picture. You're saying engaged funds that already exist yeah. to be able to solve the problem in a practical way. I think that's a, that's a good solution. The, the, the next one? Uh, Mr. Mbaru? I think <coughs> this is a very difficult question. And uh, it's a very challenging question. Let me rephrase it so that I can see whether I got it right. Here is a person, a person who is unemployed. That person is very passionate about what that person, person wants to do. But that person is not getting a job. So what do you do with that type of a person? I think, let me first start by saying that there is nothing great which can be achieved without passion. Any job which is done without passion can never be done to the to the, the highest level of excellence. So passion is very, very important in whatever one does. So if you have passion and you are unemployed, you are very passionate about something. Either you have some big ideas, some ideas you want to implement, something you've been thinking about, been dreaming about, but and you want to implement it. That's why you have a passion. I think I can approach it from two points of view. You can either become an entrepreneur and you can try to implement or put your ideas into a business form and therefore you can make money out of it. But the important thing is that you want to bring your idea into action, into fruition. There are many, in the Western world, we have venture capitalists. The people who look at the people, they look at the ideas they have, they look at the degree of passion and commitment to the idea. They also look at the background of the person. They do a psychoanalysis of those people to assess whether they really will push that idea to its logical conclusion. Once they are convinced you, are, you have true passion in it and you are willing to work very hard and you are committed, then they can invest in you. You do not have to put money into it, but your passion, your energy, your ideas, they can invest them in them and they can help you to bring it up uh, into existence. These are, 
We call these angel investors, and there are many individuals all over the world who listen to ideas, and then they try to find out whether they can make money in partnership with the owner of the idea uh, and the passion. So if, I, if I'm hearing you correct, you're saying you're going to create an environment within this city that will enable people to attract investors and for opportunities to be available for those who need those opportunities, right? That is what we want to do. We also want to encourage the emergence of what you call venture capital, capitalist industry here. There are a lot of people who are becoming rich now, and they have some extra money, and they will be willing to risk it on some of these great ideas. Okay, thank you. Pastor Kiama. Yes, I want to take a few more over here. Uh, no, this side, we, are, we have moved, to, okay, there's a young man over here. We have a lot of ladies uh, raising up their hands, so we'll have this young man, and then I'm going to pick a couple of people. One sentence. Okay. I want to speak about education. One sentence. Sorry, we, I, we didn't get to hear that on this side. Education. Because in Nairobi, only a hun in a hundred percent of people who do uh, KCP, only that pa thirty percent go to high school. Okay. Woo! Sorry. He's a bit of a soft gentleman. Okay, education. Uh, we thank God for, for the 30% who get through by the 70%. Where was that hand? There was a hand over here somewhere. One here. I haven't heard anything to do with IT and using the inventions that young people, the solutions they're creating. How are you going to reach them and get their attention? Let me turn that into a comment. Nairobi is the IT hub of Africa. Someone needs to make something up, a statement about that. I think we are the only city with an I hub, eh? This side of uh, Cindy. Sorry, let me say four because they all affected me today. Okay. One sentence with four questions. Is that okay? All right, all right, all right. Street children and hawkers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, just I'll take those, I'll take those. Okay. And we had one other one. Yes. Sleaze in the city council. Oh yes, the sleaze. The sleaze in the city council, education, IT. Okay, I think I have the four of them. Okay, very good. All right, let's see. And then, and then Actually, we, can, we, can we have one more question so that they all have a chance to say when they finish? Each of them, because I've got four, and they are, just okay. one more. Okay, we have, we have one more. Yes, just one more question. We'll, we'll have one more, and because we are in, uh, because you are in the election season, I need you to vote. Tell me which one. Is that which one? one? Okay, Atemi, have Atemi. Someone else wanna? Okay, there's that one. Okay, all those for Atemi say yeah. Okay, all those for that one say yeah. Okay, fine. The yeas have it on this side. <laughs> Relax. Relax. So, um. The country has a blueprint, the Vision 2030. How do you as governor ensure that the city that is in the center of this Vision 2030, the masses, not the middle class, are engaged? Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I okay, think do you have, you have enough I have now? five questions and I think I have a natural person to answer because he has been a coordinator with the 2030. Okay, uh, just, just before you give him a question, right? let me tell you what the next thing, that we're going to do two things after this and then we're going to be done. Is that good? The, the two things that we're going to do, I will, I'm going to give you like a one minute opportunity to pitch for Nairobi. One minute. You're in the elevator because you've traveled to some city for, uh, you know, in Di De is it Davos? Davos or Davos. You're in Davos and you're in an elevator for one minute with Bill Gates. Mr. Bill Gates. What will you tell him about Nairobi as the governor of Nairobi? So that's, that's going to be, once we're done with this one, that's what we're going to talk about. The second thing we're going to do is we want to pray for all of you because we believe God is the God of this city. And one of you will be the governor. And you're going to need God's help for it. But all of you are leaders and we know that you're going to need God's help in this season of, of, of campaigns. That's what we can give you. You've given us your time tonight. All we can give you back is prayer for God to be able to walk together with you. We are Christians, we believe God can do it for you. Every single one of you. Is that good? You like that? Even me, I like it. Okay, let's do it. So the questions, 
and then we're going to do we're going to have a pitch and then we can call it a night please if you have a question that wasn't answered please put it tweet it because we're going to tweet it and, and we're going to put the handle for this gentleman they can address it because they have a week to do that do you like that or me i like it anyway yeah, my first question goes uh, the one on vision 2030 how are we going to incorporate that particular document in the city of nairobi and that will go to you mr kobe and then i'll ask uh mr Mbaru to please answer the question about street children and workers in the city and then i'll ask uh, mr kisia to please answer the question on it and its use in, in nairobi and then i'll ask mr kidero about the situation with our education that has 30 percent only of our students who are going into um, into high school and then the last question somehow has disappeared from my app i can the sneeze you know what is it's come out on my ipad that's the problem with these things sneezing city council the sneeze in the city council or in the in the structures that will actually govern the city so if you would answer those questions and please be as brief and as succinct as you can so that we can have time to to wrap this up well so i'm actually, I'm actually going to be counting a minute for for each of you so mr kobe please go ahead so uh, the elevator speech first or no 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 the 2030 vision 2030 its use in nairobi and how we will we will build it into the city's fabric so well uh the vision 2030 of course her question is very direct is how we're going to make sure that we we engage the masses and not just the elite to achieve in the vision 2030 and how i would address this is uh, the vision 2030 has the political pillar one of the things is to engage the masses in politics and the key thing is to tell people the reality the reality is currently we are having a media that people are paying to be aired in, in tv station for interviews we're having people who are buying headlines and we're having people who if you have a good story, someone else pays so that your story is not covered. And I've said I'm going to engage the people in politics and I'm going to tell them the truth so that more youth, more women, and more mature people can participate in politics. You need to know the truth and the media as a tool should take its rightful position and the constitutional responsibility to give the people the right to information. That's how I'm going to comment about uh, uh, political participation then when it comes yeah, to this we'll, we'll hold it on that as you all know that politics is, is one of the pillars of 2030 yes yes, yes. so we'll, we'll, we'll move on we'll just take that yes. comment okay. move to the next person uh, thank you very much in the year that's gone there is um, um, the, the kcp that has just come out 800,000 kids sat uh, for for kcp and about 27 percent of them were in nairobi actually the admissions were 70 percent and 30 percent didn't um, didn't go in uh, as you all know i'm a member of uh, odm and the code manifesto is very very clear that we are going to go for compulsory uh, free education up to the age of 18. so we are going to ensure that kids stay in school uh, uh, from uh, from the age um, from the age of four five to the age of eighteen. Currently in Nairobi, about twenty percent of the kids are not in school, and about uh, thirty percent drop off after um, uh, after uh, standard eight. Uh, but in the meantime, what we'll do is we used to have polytechnics and village polyte polytechnics, which we were taking uh, giving crafts courses. And uh, as you know, Nairobi Polytechnic was, the Kenya Polytechnic was turned into a university, all the other polytechnics were turned into universities. So we will need, and that's the responsibility of the county government, to build polytechnics that will take uh, the kids okay. who do not make it for further, for further, for upward education. Thank you, Dr. Kidera. Oh, you're, you're doing well. I'm counting the minutes, just finishing your minute. That's good. Keep it that way. Oh, sorry. Welcome. Testing one. Yeah. Two of this working now. Uh, the City Council of Nairobi, as all of us know, and I'm not uh, targeting any individual, it's just talking the truth. There's a lot of corruption that goes on in there. There's a lot of bureaucracy. Of course, uh, we don't want to inherit any of that processes. If I'm to talk about the licensing, for instance, 
we need to automate our licenses. When you go to Rwanda, for instance, a very young country like Rwanda, everything is automated. You get your license for business in like uh, one day. And there is that urgency of uh, licensing. You get it in um, uh, the same hour you apply. So that encourages investors to come and invest within our county. And that is what I think we need to encourage. And as a governor, I will encourage that. Of course, 35% of our revenues, for instance, get to loss and you, uh, they, they, they get to the individual hands. We need to automate and make sure that if it is the, the, the parking fee, hence it should end up in the bank. And then, of course, um, once it ends up in the bank, the rest is history. It's not rocket science to know that when, you know, when you're doing business, most businesses uh, are 16% profitable. So it's not different from the county, or rather the treasury within the county. You will find that... Um, oh, uh, sorry, your, your minute is almost up. Uh, th th up. Thank you. In, two, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, we need to automate our processes. We need to encourage investors to come by uh, doing the licensing processes easier by automating them and of course encouraging investors to, to, uh, to make sure that licenses are done within Thank you. the day. Thank you. Got it. Mr. Kisia. Thank you. Now, um, why do I believe that uh, ICT will back uh, Nairobi County, the um, um, county to want to be in? One, it will improve on efficiency, it will improve on effectiveness, it will make um, our transactions um, economical. Now, during my tenure, I was able to do uh, one or two things. One, the planning department was uh, fully automated, um, and that is why uh, World Bank recognized the council as one of the best in South and Africa. We were able to move um, approval, building approvals from an unknown time to 30 days. The other thing that automation helped improve efficiency of the council and the economy was the issue of the fuel card. Uh, when I came in, um, they were using manual systems. I brought in a fuel card and we pushed, or, or rather we dropped the cost from 14 million shillings to 5 million shillings per month. The other one is single business license. If you check Uhuru Kenyatta's um, budget speech of 2010, you realize that he did commend the council from um, moving um, single business license from seven days to one day. So I believe that by uh, fully automating the council, we'll be able to make it more effective and more friendly to the customer, it sounds. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. That's, so that, these are two automation ideas right there. That's good. Finally, um, I have two questions in one. Street children and hawkers. <laughs> the, street ch the street children <laughs> exist because they are street families. So the question we need to ask is that why do we have street families? Or how can we reduce street families? I personally believe that if the Nairobi economy is vibrant, if we double the GDP of Nairobi or triple it, I think there will be enough jobs to the extent that even those families who are looking for a livelihood on the street will be fully engaged. If we were to reintroduce, revisit our garment industries, and we start stitching, I'm sure even some of the ladies who are on the street with the children, they will not be willing to stay there, they will be employed and be engaged. And hence, I think we would have probably no street children. I think street children and street families are tied up with the poverty, which is the number of areas, and if you get rid of urban poverty, you get rid of some of these uh, street families and children. As far as hawkers are concerned, to me, hawkers are very important. To me, that is the first training ground for an entrepreneur. That is how people emerge as entrepreneurs, as big business people. They start by selling small things. Yeah, they start by selling small things on the streets. Then they gain confidence. Then they graduate into bigger things. I have a very good example. And he's a friend of mine. He just told me, 
is Boniface Mwangi, who is one of the best uh, cameramen now we have in the continent of Africa. He told me, he met me in 2002 as a hawker in Pangani area. Today he's the best, uh, uh, he's one of the best businessmen in the photography and uh, in that area. But he started as a hawker. So what we need to do is not to, is to encourage hawking, but get it in a very well organized manner, put them in, well, in these special places and organize that business and respect it and also not harass hawkers. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. I would have you know that Mr. Boniface Mwangi actually does come here, uh, like some people we have had today. Now, your elevator pitch. I have my time over here. One minute with Mr. Bill Gates. Um, can we decide on the order? Who should go first? Okay, Mr. Baru. Mr. Baru, you go first. Wait. And then who will go next? Mr. Kisia. Who will go last? Kobia. Okay, we have it. So I think people like this order. Uh, well, I'm going to ask them, them to do something though. Yeah. But as they give us the elevator speech, yeah. please do it standing. Yeah. Come we'll stand like before us and tell us why it is that this city will be the best city in the world. Okay, I'm just about to time you there. You go now. Hi, Mr. Bill Gates. My name is Jim Nambaro. I come from Nairobi. It's a pleasure to meet you here. Yeah. I want to say that Nairobi has got some of the best brains in the country. We have a lot of young people in the country who are educated at the university level, at all levels, and these people are uh, IT very literate. And I think if you can set a laboratory here where you can now start producing a lot of software, I think you'll be making a very great fortune for yourself. And in the process, this city grows a benefit. This is going to be the capital city of all the businesses operating in the continent of Africa. Please be a part of that city. Thank you. Very good. Okay, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Okay, now. Um, good evening, uh, Mr. Bill Gates. My name is Philip Kisia from the county of Nairobi. Nairobi presents great opportunities. We have a vision for this county. It's engraved under Vision 2030. It presents great opportunities for business people all over the world. Nairobi is a, a hub of communications, business in East and Central Africa, and I invite you to be part of uh, the takeoff. Nairobi as a county is ready for a takeoff. Please be a part of it. Very good. Just before you bell rang, okay. Mr. Makua, just a minute. Okay, now. Good morning, Mr. Bill Gates. My name is Eric Makua. I come from the, 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 the sun in the city, or the city in the sun. <laughs> Nairobi. There are lots of opportunities in Nairobi and uh, of course right from uh, banking sector, right from uh, agriculture, this uh, ICT where you are an expert. I encourage you to think about starting investing within Nairobi and I as the governor of Nairobi, I will show you the areas that you are likely to invest and uh, make your good return. Maybe I encourage you to make a visit to Nairobi and uh, we have a talk in our conference rooms. Thank you. Okay. Just a minute, Dr. I need to get uh, this thing working. Okay, now. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Bill Gates. My name is Dr. Evan Skidero, a resident of Nairobi. Nairobi uh, is a home to 10% of the Kenyan population and is the gateway to a big free market uh, of about a billion people. Na Nairobi is a home to a lot of young men and women who are entrepreneurial, who are bright and will offer great, great uh, intellectual capital to the industry that you wish, wish to set up. We invite you, as Nairobi is within four hours of African major uh, cities and within eight hours of most international capital cities in the world. Welcome to Nairobi. OK, 
okay? That, that was very cool. It's actually was a little short. You might even have to, some time to discuss about family, you know, hi, how's your wife doing, you know, all of that stuff. Okay, Kobe, are you ready? I'm just about ready now. Good evening, Mr. Bill Gates. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Geoffrey Tuku Kobia. I'm the outgoing governor of Nairobi, the safest city in Africa, the financial hub for Africa, a, a city that enjoys diversity, and a city where healthcare is universal, and a city where everyone lives like family. I invite you to work with us, come to Nairobi, and enjoy the facilities that we've been able to create as one Nairobi, and I would like you to help me invest in subways and we take Nairobi forward. Thank you, Mr. Bill Gates. Very good. Pastor Kiana. Yes. I I'm curious about one thing. None of these yes. gentlemen mentioned one of the things that Nairobians love the best. Yes. We'd want to invite Bill Gates too. Yes. Do, do you people eat Nyamachoma? <laughs> Nyamachoma? Yes. <laughs> Pastor okay. Kiana. I've, I've had fun tonight. Let's just celebrate this gentleman. They've done a good job. Well done. We are about done now. We now need to give a gift for this gentleman. And this gift is a gift of our prayer. Just connecting them and connecting us all and our city with our God and our maker who has put us in this city. And to lead us in prayer, I'm going to invite uh, someone who has written about this city preached about this city, spoken about leadership, uh, spoken about the things that concern God about this city. Would you put your hands together and welcome Mr. Simon, the man. Baby! Well, uh, we appreciate you, gentlemen. We want to invite you, please, to stand as we pray together. May I invite all of us to stand as we pray? We need the representation. We just want to say that uh, one of our aspirants, Mr. Waititu, was not able to come and be with us. Uh, but we will pray for him as well because he's a candidate and we want to commit you to the Lord. Uh, before you is something that you could use to kneel down just as a sign of respect and dependence to God as we pray together. May we invite you please uh, respectfully to kneel as we pray. Let me ask you, church, just to stretch your hand towards these gentlemen as we commit them to the Almighty God. Almighty God, we want to thank you that you're the God of this city. The four million people who live here, you care for them. You created them. And we want to thank you for these men who are offering themselves to work with you to make sure that there's justice, unity, and prosperity for the people of this city. Your word tells us in Proverbs 29 verse 2, when a right person rises in authority, the people rejoice. When a wrong, wicked person gets there, all the people cry out. We want to call upon you, almighty God, out of these gentlemen who offer themselves, that you will get us the right person. And the rest will be able to stand together with that person for us to see that the people of this city, the poor and the rich, uh, the women and the men, the employed and the unemployed, together they will praise the God who raises leaders. Lord, we want to pray that you will make sure that those who don't have a heart to help and who don't fear God and who don't have character will not make it because you're the Lord who calls for righteous leaders. Lord, we have also preached from this pulpit that we are looking for a 5C governor, one who is compassionate, uh, uh, who is caring, one who has character, one who has a compelling vision, one who, is, who has the competence to take this city where it's supposed to go. Lord, we want to pray that you will give us that 5C leader. Out of these gentlemen, we pray that you will help the hearts of Nairobians uh, to land on that person because you raise leaders and you bring them down. Lord, we want to pray for this man. 
in the next eight days or so, protects them wherever they go. Give them the grace they need to sell their policies to Nairobians. Lord, we pray that none of them will be sick. None of them will get into trouble. All of them will be under the protective eye of the Almighty God. We also want to bless their families and bless what they do. And we pray that whoever you grant an opportunity to lead, in the fear of the Almighty God, they will do what they are promised. And they will depend on you as well. We bless them from Mavuno Church. That each one of them will be fearless influencers. And that each one of them will also find you in a way that you may work in their lives. We pray for those who may not know you as Savior. That they will come to that knowledge of the Lord. And we pray for all of them that in the fear of the Lord they will lead. And conduct their business as leaders. So we bless them from this pulpit. And we pray for your grace and your blessing upon each one of them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we together pray. Amen. Let's give it up to God as we celebrate. Well, we really appreciate every single one of you. We really do. And um, whichever, whichever one of you makes it, um, just know you are always welcome here to Mavuno and uh, we will welcome you, we, will sp we would love to spend time together with you and we would love to build Nairobi together and we know that even though, even though uh, not all of you can be governor, all of you can be fearless influencers like we say here in Mavuno and we are willing to work with every one of you. We are going to con conclude with the, uh, the words of a prayer that was written many years ago that we can all join together in and that is the prayer uh, of our national anthem so if the band will just lead us we're going to sing the first stanza in english for those who uh for, for those who may be streaming this so that they can know that it's a prayer that we're saying together as well to leave as quickly as they're able to do. Thank you very much. God bless you all.